So in this tutorial, you are going to learn how to set up a report builder, create and publish your first report. In the part one, we actually uh, set up uh, reporting services. We follow these steps, download SQL servers, install management studio, install reporting services, configure SSRS and connect SSRS and register a report server. And we're able to access this web um, report server URL uh, web portal. So today we are now going to uh, actually build a report. So to do that, we are actually going to uh, uh, go to part two. So this part two, uh, what we just covered is part one. So in part two, we are going to install Report Builder. So let's go ahead to get started. If, you, if this is your first time, please remember to subscribe. Click on the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any updates. If you have any challenges following my lessons, please do leave me a comment as well. So the first thing we need to do is to download and install Report Builder. So you can re download Report Builder from this link. So if you click on this link, you have Report Builder uh, page right here. So download it. If you download it, it downloads, and then you can uh, you can see it downloading here. But I did download it, and you simply double click to go ahead to install it. Okay. So by the way, I'm going back here. So after installing Report Builder, we simply have to open Report Builder. It's as simple as that, and then we are going to actually start building report. So we are going to create a tabular report. So let me open Report Builder. So I think it's Microsoft Report Builder. Um, so let me just type Report Builder. So now we should have Report Builder. So we have it here. By the way, it will appear on your desktop uh, on your desktop as well. So this is not configuration manager, but report builder, right? So it's going to open and we start creating our report. So you can see it's starting up right here. And it's basically a GUI tool that you can use to select your, your data. So this is the, the getting started window. So this window simply close it up and the main report builder window will have to show up just like so this is the main report builder window. So again, the step is right there in my website, how to create reports. So since I already have gone through these steps, I'm not going to repeat it. So what we are going to do at this point, we need to um, create a database. So we need some data, right? We need some sample data. So what I recommend you do, you can get a sample data uh, called NotWind. So if, if I go to not, um, NotWind, as a sample, not being, not being database sample, uh, sample download, it's a BAK file. So if you type something like this, it can take you directly to, you can see, download XPL not being, not being BAK. I think it should be this one. All right, so you can see a link to download the BAK file. So download and it comes as a zip. Actually, I don't know if this is the right. Okay, yeah. So you can see the zip file here. All right. So I'm going to simply uh, maybe. Um, I think I'll simply on zip so extract files to specify folder. Extract files to specify folder. So I'm extracting to my download folder and extract. So if I go to my download folder, I should be able to see the NotWind database. I mean, the NotWind database we just extracted. So um, let me see. Um, so let's keep a second. So I don't know why my system is kind of slow this time. Okay, so let's see. So we have the, I have Adventure Watch, but not Adventure Watch. So it should be not Wind. Not Wind should be in the download folder. So can you see it? Let me change the view to list. Um, list. List. And you can see. No, I did extract it right. So if I just, um, yeah, you can see not Wind, and you can see not Wind.bak, right? Not wings.bak, and we are simply going to our SL database, go to databases, and simply right click on databases and choose um, restore database. If you click on restore database, you'll be able to select the not wings database we downloaded and be able to uh, restore it and be create a new database. So, uh, to database source is going to be a device, so I'm going to select my Download folder. So here, it's click here to add your download folder. Um, so if I can 
find my download folder. Yeah, so sometimes what is easy might just be to copy. Okay, here is my download folder. So I have not went right here. I'm going to select and say OK. And say OK. So when you say OK, it's going to simply add and say OK at this point. So when you click on OK, it's going to rest, uh, restore. And you have not went right here. All right? So you have not went. That's the only thing you need right here. Okay, so having uh, downloaded and restored nothing, let's go to continue to build a report. We are simply going to build a table report that simply displays a list of customers or a list of products. So I'm going to give this report a title. Again, this steps are in my website, uh, so you can just follow them. So give it a title here. I'm going to call it my, my awesome report. Now, this title you can actually format it any way you like. So I'm going to just shift it to the middle and make it bold and maybe make it uh, 36. And you can actually change the color and the font size. But for now, let's just leave it the way it is. All right, so let me make some room here by shifting down. Now, if you go to insert, we want to create a table report. But we need to create two things we need to create a data source and a data set. So the first thing I'm going to go to add data source right here. And it's going to ask me to select a data source. Let's leave it as data source one. I'm going to go to use connection embedded in my report and drop down here and choose SQL, Microsoft SQL Server. And normally you can type the connection string, but normally I uh, think it's easier to just build it. So when you click on build, the data, the server name can be enter dot, uh, dot right? To be local to represent the local server and drop down you see all your databases now i'm going to choose northwind right i can click on test connection it should work and it succeeded i'm going to say okay so i'm going to say okay i've added a data source it means that the data that's going to be displayed on this report is going to be coming from this database northwind because we also need to create a data set the data set is simply a subset of your of data in one or more tables right so the data set can be data set one, but you can give it a name. I'm going to click on use data set embedded in my report. And this is just one data set I have here. And normally you can add your query here, but it's more convenient to use a query designer. So I'm going to click on query designer and it's going to show me a number of things. So I have tables here. So I you may want to display a list of products. So I can just kind of um, drop down this product. Right, I can select it and I can run the query just to see what this place. So you can see a number of things appear here. Um, so let's take out the category ID and the uh, supplier ID. So you can simply uh, click on category ID and just remove it. Supplier ID, remove. And I'm going to rerun it now so we have a data that kind of makes sense. All right. We want to display this report on our reports uh, designer, and then we can run this report, and later we export it onto the um, our, our report builder, you know, our web portal. So I'm going to click on OK, and this is what it looks like. I'm going to say OK. OK, so we now have our data source, and we also have our data set, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is now to go to Insert and choose now we have table report, we have matrix report. We're going to be talking about this a little later. We have charts, we have a number of things. But for now, let's just keep it very simple. Let's just create a report that displays a list of products. So it's going to be a table report. I'm going to choose table wizard and I'm going to choose my data set, which is the data set I created earlier. And now I'm going to choose everything. Now you have column groups and row groups. That is we are going to be using this a little later, I mean after now, to create summaries and groupings of our data. For now, let's just display the table of items on the report on the page. So I'm going to drag everything from the fields and, and put them right here in the value. Okay. And I'm going next. So um, yeah, so now if you go back, you have uh, like you have the sum of product ID. We can actually uh, remove it from here, but for now, let's just put everything here and let's see what we have. So I'm going next and say finish. Okay, so this is what we have. So basically, everything. Now we are having some, and you're having some, you're having some. So any field that is integer uh, numbers is going to try to calculate the sum for that product ID. Um, 
is going to calculate the sum of that field. But for now, there's no groupings. So let's just complete the process. And later, we're going to come back here to actually do some aggregation. If I run this report, by clicking on the run button, we are going to see some data displayed on the report. So basically, this is what we have as a report, just a list of products. Let's go back to the designer by clicking on the designer. And now I'm going to simply click on this to save this report. I'm going to call it product report. When you save a report, the extension is RDL. So it's an RDL file. So if you look at my system, uh, you have a number of reports. Like this is how the icon looks like. But now there's product report. So I'm going to just remove report from the name and just call it product. All right. Or oh, let me call it product uh, data. Product data. Okay. Product data reports. Okay. Save. And now our report is created. All right. Now the next thing we want to do. There are a number of things you can do. You can actually come to file and click on um, publish report parts. I think this will be the easier thing to do is to simply. Um, go to the reports services page, I mean the report services URL, and simply upload your report. So if I come here, I can click on this upload. I can upload my product services report, and it's available in downloads. And I'm going to not download, I think, in the document, if I'm not mistaken. So it's product data report like this. So I'm going to click on open. So once you select the report you want to upload, you are going to see that the report is going to be displayed um, uh, as a link on this report services page. The reason is this report services page is simply a summary of all your reports displayed as a grid view or as a tile or as a list or detailed view. So we now have one report called product services report available to the public in my local intranet. You can also expose it to the web. We are going to be talking about this a little later. So if I click on it, see this report is going to is going to run this report and display the data right here. As you can see, um, just wait for a second, it's going to display right here. So I have my awesome report. Let's play them. You can actually, uh, I think it's only one page, so I don't think you can navigate to anywhere. Okay, I think you can navigate. Okay, that's fine. So you can see um, these are the report dates up to 76. So this is page two, right? Page two. And this is basically how it works. So at this point, you've completed creating a report using um, SSRS, SQL Server Reporting Services. What next? Now, I've created a basic tabular report with no aggregation, with no summaries. The nice part, I'm going to now show you how to add summaries to this report and also how to create a matrix report. We're going to be talking about this after now and later we talk about how to create dashboards using charts and graphs. But for now, I'm going to stop here. I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. If you have challenges, let me know in the comment box below. We are going to continue in part three. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'd like to thank you for being there.